Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar, which is called Learn How to Get Your Target's Attention in Three Seconds. Uh, this is a partner webinar together with our friends from uh, Snapchat. They're based in their London office right now. Uh, we are in sunny Berlin, and we're happy to have you on the call. Uh, the webinar will roughly take uh, 35 to 40 minutes, and as always, we'll have two parts. So we'll have the Snapchat part, uh, talking a bit more about what ad formats they support. It's some, somewhat of a new platform for many advertisers out there. So I think it will be super interesting to learn what formats they have, how they perform, uh, and some tips and tricks to make that performance the best uh, possible. And we on the adjust side will, of course, highlight how to attribute uh, the installs that you get from those campaigns and give you some ideas about how to leverage the integration that we have with the two platforms. So here, uh, your presenters today, I'm not on the slide, I didn't make it, there wasn't enough room, but uh, we have Carly, who's on the left-hand side, uh, Samuel in the middle uh, from Snapchat, um, working on the business uh, side and on the global online sales side, and uh, from Adjust, we're joined by uh, Juste, who is um, our product marketing manager and can obviously speak to the integration that we have with Snapchat. Um, on the next slide, just a few small things. Uh, on the housekeeping end, we will, of course, record the webinar, um, so you won't miss anything, or if you miss anything, you'll be able to rewatch it and also share it with your uh, colleagues and friends. And we'll obviously send you the slides afterwards um, and the recording. And if we can, of course, we would like to make it as interactive as possible. So you, if you have any questions, you can always pop them into this little uh, question panel that you see there uh, on GoToWebinar, and uh, we'll take those questions as they come and hopefully have enough time at the end, five to 10 minutes, to uh, get to answer as many as possible. So that's uh, kind of it uh, on my end. I'm really happy that, uh, that we could make this happen and really interested to hear from uh, Snapchat um, basically what formats they have and uh, a lot of the tips and tricks to make this uh, type of advertising work. So without further ado, I would like to pass it on to you guys to walk us through the first part of the webinar. Thanks. Thanks, Fabian. Hi, guys. My name is Sam. I look after the global online sales team here in EMEA. Um, and joining me today is my colleague, Carly, who is one of our kind of longest standing account managers and has been with us kind of since the birth of our self-serve tool. First off, what we want to do is thank Just for hosting this. I'm super excited to finally get this partnership up and going with the webinar series. Super important partner for us as Just is kind of one of the key ways in which we're able to measure and attribute our app and store product as well as our re-engagement of product. Next off, we want to thank you all for joining in. Uh, today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to cover two areas. First off, we're really just going to give you an overview of Snapchat itself. So one, what is the app? How do people use it? And then second of all, more importantly, how you as businesses can benefit from this. And then Carly's gonna go into the exciting stuff, which is the creative angle, how you can really make an excited ad within three seconds. So, for those of you who aren't as familiar with Snapchat as others, Snapchat, we really see ourselves as a camera company. The reason being is Snapchat is all about how you use the camera to learn more about the world, have fun, and create content. When we talk about Snapchat, we really focus around this kind of camera being the new home screen. As you can see from here, from the home screen, instantly you're able to do a kind of a range of things, be it create content with our kind of iconic poppy dog lens, right the way to finding out more about the world by using our tools like Shazam to kind of find out what that song is on in the background, right the way through to using our snap codes to kind of go around the world, kind of bring the real life to digital. When we talk about the app, we talk about it in three compartments. Obviously, again, the camera being the home screen, front and center. To the left-hand side, we have our chat functionality. When we talk about chat and Snapchat, we talk about conversations between you and your closest mates, be it through a one-to-one -one message or between one in the group. Second of all, on the right-hand side of the app, we have our Discover content. Discover content in Snapchat is amazing. It consists of kind of three main variants. One, we have our content made by our content creators the likes of Kim Kardashian, right the way through to DJ Khaled. Then we have our content made by our users. Our users either submit this to their story, or what we do in Snapchat is we create snaps from around the world into creating what we call our stories. Our stories is one of my personal favorites of what we do here at Snapchat. We've done stories from everything from kind of Mother's Day, from different angles around the world, right the way through to my guilty pleasure, Adele, 
Uh, what we did was we were able to cover her concept from over 300 cameras, different point of view. And then finally, we have our content from our third party publishers. Everything from the kind of daily mail, right the way through to the Telegraph, right the way through to, again, another one of my guilty pleasures, Cosmopolitan. Uh, what we're able to do there is have our publishers create content just for Snapchat to really embrace the full screen vertical video format. So that's the app itself. Who's using it? When we talk about Snapchat, first thing I like to do is talk about how large the audience is. We have over 191 million DAUs, but the important thing to understand here is yes, it's a large and growing audience, but it's already an incredibly diverse audience. When we talk about diversity, we don't just mean it's across geographics. Geographically now, we have over 53 million users in Europe and over 11 million in the UK itself, where we are today. But we also have an incredibly diverse audience when we talk about our age groups. As you can see here, over 80% of our audience now are above the age of 18. So we have a large audience, we have a diverse audience, but I think one of the key things to understand is how engaged our audience is. One of the amazing things about Snapchat is how much people are jumping in and out of the app every single day. The reason for this is because, again, we are a camera communication platform. Conversations don't just start and end at the beginning of the week and the end of a month, they go throughout the day. Hence why when we talk about our DAUs, we talk about daily users as opposed to kind of monthly, which the industry is used to. This is because true Snapchatters are in and out of the app throughout the day, every day. On average, a Snapchatter is in the app for about 30 minutes a day. If you look at our under 18 audience, they're in it for over 40 minutes. To put that into perspective, for those of you who watch Friends, that's two episodes of Friends every single day they're spending in Snapchat. Not only are they spending a lot of time in the app, one of the key things that makes us different is people are jumping in and out of the app throughout different moments. An average user is jumping in and out of the app over kind of 25 times a day, which is insane when you think about it. That's more than once for every hour that they're awake in the day. So we talk about our audience, we talk how diverse it is, how engaged it is, and obviously how incredibly kind of fast paced it is. But the main thing to understand is how unique it is. And this is where the real business opportunity lies for you guys. The reason I talk about this is if you look at this and we look at kind of it from a monthly or a weekly perspective, you won't find a core percentage of our audience on any other platform. So for instance, in the UK alone, by not being on Snapchat, you're potentially missing out on upwards of 27, sorry, 2.7 million users every single day. So when we talk about our platform, I really want to kind of just give you a high level overview again of the app itself, who's on it, but most importantly, what I want to do is show you how you as a business can get set up and started. Snapchat's ads manager is incredibly similar to other platforms. Straight away, what we do is we encourage you guys to select your objective of what your business wants to achieve, be it app install, be it re-engagement. This is very similar to probably what you're doing on other platforms. Next thing when it comes to our targeting. Targeting again, very similar to other platforms. The key thing here is if you want to target based on age, gender, location, even into kind of specific audience interests, we can do that. The amazing thing you can do if you partner with the likes of Adjust is you can also use your third party data. So if you want to go after your existing customers or you want to build lookalikes using our custom audience tool, you can do that here in Snapchat as well. This is the amazing thing. We have all the functionality that people would expect from a self-serve tool ready for you to use today. So similar objectives, similar targeting, and then for tracking, again, very similar to other platforms. If you're working with the likes of Adjust, what you're able to do is instantly integrate and get the data that you're used to. Be it your app stores, be it your post app activity, you're able to use Adjust to fully measure the performance of Snapchat. The key thing that makes us different is our ad unit. Our ad unit is a full screen vertical video ad. Carly's gonna jump into this in a bit more depth in a minute, but the key thing here that you can see is when we look at a snap compared to our competitors, you can see our ads take up the full screen. They've got sound on, and this is something which we really embrace. Because it's so different though, it is meaning you are gonna to have to adapt and change the way in which you do your creators. And that's why I wanted to spend the majority of this webinar going through our best practices on how to make the perfect snap in under three seconds. Over 
Chief Knowledge. Thanks, Sam. So diving into understanding what makes a good snap ad, uh, we do have a set of best practices, but they all fall around a simple sort of like guidance of simplicity is key and clear messaging is extremely important. Because snap ads are um, opt in to view and empower user choice, a user can skip right through them if it doesn't capture their attention. So you want to make sure that you make it simple for the Snapchatter to choose to watch your ad. It, despite being simple, we do have a guidance of best practices that we'll dive into. Um, the first being is to build your top snap for five seconds or less. Top snaps can be up to 10 seconds, but we see the best performance with snap ads that are under five seconds. Within that five seconds, our, one of our best practices is to ensure that the first two seconds really count. You can see this in the Airbnb example here. In the original ad, there's not clear branding. You're not really sure. It could be an ad for the yurt. Um, we'll play that for you real quick. But it is a really great visual. You just, there's such a lag time between the ad and then knowing who it is, what they want you to do. So we worked with our strategy team to develop version two, which has clear branding, um, and gets the message across in that first two seconds. Right off the bat, the user knows that they should swipe up to install and book a stay with Airbnb. The second best practice is to keep your objective in mind. As Sam mentioned, you can use Snap Ads for a couple different um, business objectives, uh, and that should help drive your creative strategy. For example, if you're running an app install campaign to, uh, for net new advertisers, you should keep your objective in mind and have the messaging surround that. For example, um, acquiring new users, Chappie played this ad on our platform. I got you a boyfriend. He's waiting for you on Chappie. So swipe up, swipe up now and download Chappie and claim your boyfriend. I they make it super clear that what they what their app is, what they want you to do, and what their objective is. Uh, another option, like I mentioned, is deep linking. Say you want to re-engage with old users um, or activate customers who may have downloaded your app but not yet purchased. You can do that as well, but the messaging should definitely be different from acquiring new users. Um, and the cool thing with Snap Ads is they can take many different forms for direct response. Um, the first being videos. Again, under five seconds is a best practice. They can be up to 10 seconds. Um, we always recommend thinking about video ads in reverse storytelling. So having your punchline at the beginning and then do the storytelling after, again, to really sell it in in the first two seconds. That said, you don't have to have a video asset to run Snap Ads. You can still drive a lot of uh, business results and impact with still image ads. Again, with the clear messaging at the top and then driving action with the CTA at the bottom. And then if you have the resources, it is always fun to do some interesting animations, whether that's a pizza or um, a little bit of workout steam. Um, it's really fun to get like super creative and we always encourage different tests or testing all the different formats to see which uh, option works best for you in your business. The great thing is, is you can attach multiple creative types to one ad set and our system will auto optimize for the best performing creative. So it sort of takes away that that extra work for you. Um, third best practice, again, is to keep it simple, the framing and the messaging. Uh, um, this is a prime example of reverse storytelling. Uh, we have a TV spot that the client started with, and then we'll, have the, we'll play the Snap ad that they uh, developed from the existing content that they have. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So again, a great TV spot, but you're not really sure what the app does, what they can do with it. Um, so we took that content and created the following snap ad. Uh, one thing we really love about this ad is that they kept the logo on the ad throughout the entire uh, like five seconds that it was. So people really knew right off the bat who was advertising, what it was for, and what they were going to get from downloading the app. Uh, another example of clear messaging, um, we had Design Home run ads with us, and this is what we started with. You're not really quite sure. It could be for a plant company. It could be for a game. You don't really have a clear understanding of what you're going to get when you swipe up to download. So we ended up going with the recommendation um, of a more clear, concise messaging with an ever-present logo. Want to design your dream home? Swipe up to start playing. Want to design your dream home? Swipe up to start playing. Um, and you, you saw in that example that purposeful sound and design can really make uh, an ad that much more impactful. Um, we always recommend having a voiceover of sound on, encouraging the user to swipe up, either just saying swipe up to download or elaborating more, swipe up to get your tickets today, um, really driving home that call to action. You can see here in the first ad that will play with the sound off. There's not a whole ton of context. Um, you're not sure what action to take. It's a cool ad, showcases the product, has the branding and messaging. Um, and here's the ex same example with sound on. Swipe up your superior Bluetooth speaker. It's a lot more exciting. There's a lot more energy with the music, and the voiceover tells you exactly what you're going to get when you swipe up. Another way to highlight that call to action and drive action is to highlight the CTA. We have the, the carrot at the bottom that you see, um, but anything that you can do to draw attention to that carrot and drive action um, is going to, to help performance. For example, you'll see here. The simple animation of that little pink zigzag line really drew the eye to buy now. Um, and again, helping the user to understand that that's what they can do when they swipe up. Another example is also using creative visuals. With the ad, you'll see that your eye starts down at near the home plate and is brought up, encouraging that swipe up motion while also highlighting the, the CTA here at the bottom. Swipe up to download. Home run! It's way out of here! Again, super simple and effective messaging. Um, and the really great thing is that you can do all of this using your existing content in a tool that we developed called Snap Publisher. Essentially, in Snap Publisher, we have templates um, where you can drag and drop your existing content and create a Snap ad in under a minute. Awesome, thanks Carly. So just to summarize, I think the key thing that makes Snapchat unique is one, our audience, but two, most importantly, our ad unit. We're the first platform to allow you to have that full screen immersive content. And the amazing thing about Snapchat is two thirds of our users are viewing our content with sound on. So again, a key unique thing which you need to think about with Snapchat is bringing your sound back into advertising. Finally, what you've seen from all of our ad units is we are doing this amazing swipe up pre-cash experience. With Snapchat, you don't have this awkward loading experience when you swipe up on your creative. Instantly, you're taken to the iOS or the Android store or straight through into your app, which really can help drive that strong engagement and results. What we're gonna do now is, you can see here, we've got an email. Uh, if you want to approach us with any questions you have on getting started, getting set up, you can email us here or you can contact us through our amazing Adjust partners. Uh, but what we'll do is we'll just check if there's any questions on the line now. Ah, so we've got a couple of questions here. So the first one is, oh, let's see how we, yeah, so 
how do we actually uh, buy uh, through Snapchat? So again, let's go back to our fully self-serve solution. So if you go to ads.snapchat.com, you can literally get started straight away on our platform. There's no awkward kind of waiting period. You can actually just put down a credit card and get set up within a matter of minutes. Another thing that you can do is if you get and reach out to us directly, we're more than happy to help. Second question here is, uh, what is the most uh, relevant audiences? So what we always recommend for businesses when they're first getting set up and started is probably actually using your data. The reason being is your data, merging it with ours, is always gonna be the most impactful because you know who your customers are. So what we recommend is uploading either your phone device IDs or your email address of your existing customers. And what we can do is find customers that are very similar to them on our platform. We've got a couple of other questions, but what we'll do is we'll wait to the end of um, Houston's presentation to go through those. Uh, but just again, I want to thank you all for dialing in and thanks to Just for hosting us today. And without further ado, uh, we'll hand the line over to Hoost. Thanks, guys. Um, I'll uh, pass the control on to Eustace. Um, super, super insightful. I think really good examples of uh, what you can do to, to promote your app uh, and the different Snap formats. I think they're super engaging. Um, I'll now pass it on to Eustace to tell us a little bit more about the measurement part and how uh, Snapchat and Adjust are integrated. This guys. Hello and welcome. Happy to see you here. Um, thank you for an incredible intro from Snapchat about the Just. Um, what they say it's all true. We help with the data. Um, basically, we can track entire user journey from seeing your app to your ad to clicking on it, to downloading your app, to living in your app, doing a bunch of actions, right? So we enable you to act based on the data, not just on opinion that you think that something is happening well or wrong, but actually to work on those um, optimization of your campaigns, of your, of your banners, of your targeting groups. And today I will also touch point of um, groups and how to understand which groups you should target. Even the Snapchat has such a unique group, but that can be divided into smaller groups to have better results. So we'll touch that today. Um, so integration of address in Snapchat. So it's really important to combine these two forces because Snapchat gives you the platform where you can reach those users with really unique audience while Adjust gives you the opportunity to understand how those users act, what they do, um, when they tend to convert or not. Um, so it, it's like a little um, library for you where you can find all the answers and how to optimize your campaigns, even to figure out which banner works the best, um, even working with other channels, not only in Snapchat, which channel works the best, or um, what actions are most popular, predict even trends by right? seeing that, okay, if user saw a Snapchat three times, he will probably click on it the fifth and download the app. Or if that user is already existing user, maybe after seeing specific retargeting campaign, he will come back to your app. So basically we enable you to do actions um, on the desired platform. Um, so we have quite a deep integration, so this is a great news for you, it means you don't need to do almost anything in terms of that. Basically, you, can, you will just uh, make few toggles and all the data will go automatically to Snapchat. As um, it was pointed out, that it, when you start working, it's really nice to have your own data. So we are the source of your data, right, because we can have a data about of, of yours from different campaigns you worked with other channels and you just can kind of say i want to target users who look similar to these ones so you can just upload this data send it to snapchat automatically and they will start doing this targeting or retargeting depends on your goals and a good part is that we report everything back we report 
for all your user acquisition and retargeting campaign success. You can also follow user cohorts, how they behave, how many sessions they have, what kind of events they did. And, um, and then we have this automated audience syncing, which I will uh, talk a bit later on and why it's important to have really precise audiences. Um, so as I mentioned, we are kind of data company. So I want to give you a few insights and just to know that it's really, really important to do your homework um, and to understand what's happening. Because to be fair, users tend to use your app sometimes just one. Actually, 24% of users delete your app after one use. So imagine how much effort of yours you waste for that. Um, just doing a simple math, right? If you spend around $5 for one user to acquire him and he leads his app and you lose 25% of your budget. Um, going down the line, if you look at the chart, it gets even scarier. After seven, after seven days, you lose around 75% of users. So your attention rate is up to 25% maybe 30 but that's that's a really kind of general benchmark for for all the vertical of the apps so so math here is is really scary right if, if you have in mind that you just in seven days lost 70 percent of your users times five it's a lot of money um having in mind it's still important to do both strategies it's important to acquire new users because as you see users tend to churn and you kind of can keep them in the app, can keep them engaged, but you won't reduce your churn rate to minimum. It will still, you can reduce it maybe up to 15%, but not more. So that's why it's important to keep acquiring users. And it's really important of maintaining your users or keeping their attention and happy and growing the loyalty. And doing that, you will grow your LTV and you will grow your ROI. So if you see at the blue line, this is your opportunity, which you shouldn't waste and let go so easily. Um, actually, what we see, a new trend, this comes from America or the US now, that for 2018, marketers are finally start focusing on precision targeting as a marketing campaign tactics. And I want to applaud all those marketers because I I think this is a great way to uh, boost your business in the way that you're um, securing your budgets, that you're bringing only the users who will actually convert or stay in your app. Um, you're getting users, valuable users. And, um, and to be fair, the paid uh, advertising also increases in organic growth. So if you're getting really valuable users who stay in your app and want to be there via paid advertising you also will increase the organic growth and to, uh, on the numbers it's around 100 paid installs bring you around 45 organic ones so i think doing it right brings you a lot of value and growth so um reaching that right user coming back to the question right um, how to know your audience so basically you start knowing your audience when looking at the adjust dashboard because you can look at the cohort reporting and you can see um, when users tend to churn when users tend to lapse when users tend to do the action um, and you can segment your users according to that one and main goal is to think of what you want to reach right um, so basically let's take a simple example if you want um, if you have an e-commerce app and summer finish autumn winter is coming you still have a bunch of clothes in your app and you want to sell those right so maybe you're you would like to reach not all the users of the app but only those who put item to the car but never converted never made a purchase so you just filter those users out and send them a message with a voucher for example or saying hey don't forget the shoes right and we understand season is finishing, but other will come. Um, so that helps. Also, looking at your cohorts helps to improve your app itself. How? Uh, simply, if you see that 75% of users are churning while doing registration or while checking out 
or purchase or something like that, then you understand maybe the process is broken. Maybe people don't like to waste so much time, right? Users are lazy. Think about yourself. If you need to click more than three times, you're like, ah, oh, it's not worth it. So this is how you can segment the users. And the segmentation can be done in several ways, which I will touch on a little bit later, just in a second. So another great example of user acquisition, right? Not a lot of people think about it, but I think that's the most simple, basic, and genius way what to do, how to save your budget and how to increase your precision targeting. So you have this huge base of users who saw your app, who are uninstalled, who reinstalled, who is still alive in your app, right? Or who just lapsed. But they already saw your app, your ad several times but you still probably keep on retargeting them, right? So what you can do, you can just create the list and, for example, you know, uh, sync it with Snapchat and say, please, guys, don't, do sh don't show these users any user acquisition ads, X, Y, Z. And then you will save money because there won't be any accidental clicks on those ads. If you pay for impression, there won't be any lost on impressions because those users are already not interested. Um, and if you want to re-engage them, you should show them different content, right? Different app uh, ad for them, like uh, with retargeting message rather than user acquisition. So this is really clear message, but a lot of people forget to, that they can do it. Um, and it's basically up to you, right? You can use your creative segments via to do cross promotion, to do retargeting, to do push notification to target users on Snapchat or retarget them by creating uh, custom audiences by just uploading the, um, the uh, selected segment and say target this with this. Um, so how you can create segments, right? There are several ways. So first is just um, sending a bunch of data to your targeting partner or whatever, a partner or network you're working with and say, please take this data, I'm looking for these kind of users, filter this data, target them with the, the right messages, right? So this is kind of okay-ish way, bit time consuming, because it means that you need to wait until the partner you get will have enough data so they can start working on. The other way is you can just sync directly data from Adjust to your own BI, have a few interns playing around those Excel sheets and uh, filtering out as well, creating beautiful, beautiful user segments with precise um, user activities or profiles, which is great, which is not bad. If, if you have capacity to do that uh, and time, that's amazing. And there's another beautiful way you can use a tool for that. Um, for example, at the Jest, we have this audience builder, which allows you to easily, with few toggles, just filter your users to get a dynamic link, which is so easy to share. And dynamic link means that every time a new user meets the criteria, he jumps into that uh, group, and the user who doesn't meet the criteria jumps out of it. So you don't retarget several users at the same time. Um, as well. Well, it keeps refreshing and updating, so it keeps on coming. Whichever user comes from install and meets the criteria of that, uh, of that group, they jump in and they are being retargeted or targeted for whichever reasons you want. So you can do it, you know, for example, cross for example. Uh, you can do it easily with saying, I have this app and I want more users moving to this app. So you just show users who are using your main flag app, uh, the advertisement of your new app. Maybe you have a new game, or maybe you have a sports app and you want to shift some people who do a lot of sports just to the booty app, right? So you can do all this around playing with understanding your users' needs, knowing how to segment those users, and knowing where to reach them with the right message. Right. And a Snapchat now is a great example where to reach this unique audience, which can satisfy your needs. Um, as in a great example, I want to share, um, maybe you know the app Meetit. It's a French dating app. Um, I never tried it, but I really like the concept when I was told about it. It's basically, if you surpass a person who also has a Meetit app 
downloaded uh, in the street. So here it appears on your screen and then you can accept it or decline it. And if you both accept it, it means you liked each other. It's like a feeling, you know, passing in the street, you look back, you see each other. And they start working with Snapchat and they noticed that it became their number two acquisition channel because a lot of people like their ads there. Uh, their ROI increased by 50% and their CPA decreased 70% compared to other channels. So that is an amazing proof just showing when you're combining two forces of understanding your user behavior, your channel efficiency, and what it can bring to you, analyzing it, doing your homework, creating these targeted groups and find the channel which can deliver you these groups, you can have these amazing results which allows you to grow. So that's basically it from my side. So now we can open for more questions. I think that was a super good uh, way of showing how those two platforms, so Snap obviously, the delivery, the creative, um, and the information you have on um, demographics of your users can be combined with uh, data on activity and behavior um, for those app campaigns that you're already running. So I saw there were a few more questions and I think we have about uh, five minutes that we can use to ask them. Um, I think the first one I want to ask you guys uh, in the Snapchat office, um, basically a question again about uh, demographics and creating segments, which uh, we've learned now is super important and is not only the new trend, but also provides results. So I just wanted to ask you if you could elaborate a bit more on how segments uh, can be created and what kind of um, information you have on the different audiences uh, using Snapchat. Yeah, great question. I love, I love our three screens at the top. I feel like I'm on Eurovision. It's um, <laughs> <laughs> dialing in from London for this one. Um, so I think, yeah, when it comes to audience segments, um, the key amazing thing that we've done is uh, we've actually just released an audience insight tool uh, where you can upload your CRM of data into our platform. And then what we can do is generate a report to let you know exactly where your users sit in Snapchat. So their age, their kind of gender, their location, and also some of their interests. Um, when it comes to setting up campaigns and targeting, you can layer in as much of this as you want. So in an ideal world, we really would encourage people to segment out and have multiple different targeting ad sets so they can really kind of understand where to best utilize and optimize their campaigns towards. Um, in terms of targeting, we have over 400 audience segments now to choose from. Um, so this is everything from kind of your millennial Gen Z, so your kind of 13 to 18 targeting or kind of the 18 to 25 bucket. Um, or you can do things like you can target parents. Um, I think one of my favorite audiences that we've just added is you can actually target people who are interested in burgers. Um, so <laughs> really, if you kind of think about kind of targeting that you would want, uh, you'll probably find it in Snapchat. Um, a lot of the apps probably on the line do target internationally. Um, so we do have different targeting available in our core market, the US, uh, where we actually have partnered, partnered with three um, third parties, one being Place IQ, uh, another being Comscore, and, and the final data logics. And this is where you can even utilize their databases and kind of find their users on Snapchat. So they can do everything right away to kind of uh, household incomes. Um, really interesting ones with Place that you can do is where people are going to frequently. So for maybe uh, uh, app which is focused on reselling of cars, you can target people who have recently visited loads of garages. Um, so in terms of targeting, there's kind of hundreds of options there. The best thing I recommend is just getting in the self-serve tool, playing around with it, and kind of seeing the audience reach that you can get on our platform. Great. Thanks, Sam, um, for, for a bit more insights on, on that. It uh, looks like there's a lot of segments to play around with, so I encourage you to do that, of course. Um, another question that we got is uh, around A-B testing. Um, it's something that we always recommend to our clients. Obviously, I mean, you have that data on performance of different creatives, performance of different uh, types of ads uh, and channels. But uh, now I would like to zoom in on the creative side and wanted to see if you at Snap have an easy way for people to actually do that uh, within the platform or if you can recommend kind of an outside uh, way of doing it. 
in order to see what is uh, performing better, right? And then obviously shift uh, your budget to the version of the ad that is performing better than the other one. Um, maybe you can elaborate a bit on that. Yeah, and I'll tie this into another question I saw on the line, which was asking about at what level can you um, track um, your ad performance level? Um, so the reality is that we let you kind of see all results right the way through to the individual ad. Um, so yes, definitely can A-B test. Um, in the back end, we do auto-optimize. So if you're uploaded two creatives at the same time, we would serve both at an even rate until we see which one performs the best. And then what we would do is over time is we would preferentiate the one that's driving the best ROI for your products. Um, another way in which you can A-B test is constantly refreshing your creative. So once you've got one that's performing well, going away, tweaking the others and adding them into the existing uh, ad sets. One thing I do say, and that's kind of merged into another question I saw there, which was um, people typically noticing um, the new creative always gets dominant. So is it really A-B testing in the background? The reality is with Snapchat is we do kind of encourage creative refresh a lot. The reason being is because you're now having that kind of enriched placement of full screen vertical video. It is super important for you to keep your creative up to date to potentially avoid having any creative fatigue. Um, but yes, fully can A-B test. You can have as many ads as you want per ad set. Uh, typically we recommend probably having three or four so that you can kind of learn best practices. And then I think with all platforms, the best thing to do is constantly reiterate, test, and see what's going on. So even when you've work, kind of worked out the winning formula for you on Snapchat, it's never the kind of, you're never gonna have 100%, there's always something you can try additional. And this is where I'd say when you're looking at your budgets, allocate, yes, 80% of it to the core ROI that's driving either your DR objectives or your brand, but then always allocate a small 20% of your budget to test the next new thing. And a great example of this is uh, last week we released a new product, which is our story ads, which now allows you to have a tile in our um, Discover feed. And this is a brand new product, which a lot of our advertisers have jumped on uh, instantly and seen fantastic results. However, obviously it's a whole new format, so people are a bit scared to get going at the beginning. And this is where I always say, always have that 20% of budget where you're less ROI focused, but you're more in kind of finding out what you can do net new to kind of expand uh, your current marketing mix. That sounds great. Um, I think, yeah, the 80-20 the rule applies there as well. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I, think, I think that was um, a really, really good way to, to finish this off. Um, I think what we've learned today is obviously that uh, Snapchat can provide a format uh, for certain audiences that's super engaging, probably more engaging than the standard ads and channels that you're currently working with. So um, the encouragement there is obviously to try it. Um, there is a lot of uh, power to audio, video, uh, since those are formats that are much more engaging. Uh, and then at the same time, I think it's just important uh, to mention that, yeah, advertising is, is obviously important, but you should also measure it and constantly optimize, right? Like constantly, constantly refresh your creatives, do A-B testing, make sure that you put this into perspective to other channels. And uh, obviously the baseline, the foundation of all of it is to get your segments right, to also uh, test different segments and combine data from uh, Snapchat and adjust to create very granular, very rich segments uh, that will deliver the best performance. Um, so yeah, I wanted to, to take a moment, just thank you guys, um, Sam and Carly in, in London, uh, joining us from Snapchat. I think it was a super good uh, intro to uh, Snapchat for those who weren't familiar with what you guys can offer. Uh, so I think that was very helpful um, since it's a rather new player, uh, especially in Europe. And then also wanted to thank Juste here uh, at the Adjust headquarters in Berlin for running us through how the integration works and obviously some more numbers that are important for every mobile marketer out there that wants to stay on top. So uh, yeah, without um, yeah, much else to add, just wanted to thank you guys for your attention, for being present. Uh, we'll do more of those uh, partner webinars in the future. And as mentioned at the beginning, We'll also send around the slides and the recording so you can watch it and share it, of course. So uh, yeah, that was it. There were a few more questions that we didn't get to, but we'll make sure to send them over to the Snap team because they were mostly directed at you guys. Uh, so you can get back to the individuals that had those questions. Cool, that was awesome, it. Awesome, and thanks so much for hosting. Uh, 
and uh, hopefully speak to all of you soon. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys.